Hi everyone, welcome back to Backyard Homestead. Today we're going to can some sweet and sour chicken with a yummy homemade sauce. Um, it's real simple and easy and I'm going to do quarts because that seems like a good size for me and my husband. Um, it, so the recipe says it does eight pints, so that would be like four quarts. So I'm hoping to get six quarts out of this. So we had to adapt a little. So I changed up the sauce a little, hoping we'll have enough sauce. Um, so the sauce calls for brown sugar, which I only have a little bit, so we're gonna have to do half brown sugar and half pure cane sugar. Um, white vinegar, teriyaki or soy. We're gonna use this Mr. Yoshida's, which is good stuff. Um, some ketchup, some ginger, and then the juice from all the pineapple. And we're gonna cook the sauce just enough to make it boiling and you know, dissolve the sugar, and then it'll be done. All right, so let's get started. Um, I already chopped my bell pepper and chicken, and I already browned the chicken. Well, I say browned, <laughs> but <laughs> I had it up on high and it wasn't turning brown, but, and I didn't wanna overcook, because it I didn't wanna cook it, but my chunks are about like that big, and they're pretty much most of the way cooked. I tried not to, because I don't want it to be dry or anything, but when you pressure can meat, it's, um, it makes it super tender and delicious. So that's another reason why I love pressure canned uh, meals. And the best reason is you just set this on your shelf and you don't have to put it in the refrigerator. And on a busy day, you don't feel like cooking, you just got home from work. He, you put this in a pan. Now this sauce will be thin, so you'll have to add maybe a little cornstarch slurry to thicken it, and um, then cook up some rice or whatever you wanna have uh, with it, and you've got a meal. So the longest it'll take is your rice to cook, and I absolutely love that about having pressure canned food is it's so easy to just grab it. And when you're real busy, sometimes you really just don't have time to, you know, cook a whole meal. Or you're tired and you don't feel like it. Well, it only takes a few minutes to throw rice on. You can throw it in a rice cooker, Instant Pot, whatever. I just do mine on the stove in a saucepan. Um, I have done it in the Instant Pot. But I actually prefer to just cook my rice right on the stove. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I didn't chop the onion yet. So I'm gonna chop the onion real quick, then we'll make the sauce, and then we'll get it all in the jars and get it going. So I'm gonna put you guys down more so you can see what the heck I'm doing. And so we want our onion to be pretty big size so I'm gonna do half let's get the skin off of here I'm gonna do half and about that big because you don't want little chunks because they'll just kind of turn to mush I don't know whenever I'm pressure canning I keep the veggies pretty big and I just think it um, it works out better that way this still has some skin on it or something here. Let's get that off. Oh, I hate peeling onions. I don't know about you guys, but I don't even like touching onions because they stink and they make your hands stink. But you could put some vinegar and it will take that off. Okay, I want to fill up this whole little colander here. And I'm hoping that I have enough bell pepper to make six quarts because like I said, the recipe is for eight pints and my canner holds seven quarts. So I really would like to get at least six quarts. And I cooked quite a bit of chicken. 
So I do think that we'll have it. And that's probably enough onion for six of them. I don't know. I mean, I like more bell pepper than onion, but I don't want to be short either. You know what? I'll go ahead and cut one more because whatever we don't use, I will sure use up certainly in some other cooking. And look, it's already getting dry in the middle. It needs to get cooked up anyways. Oh, come on. Okay. Just nice big chunks. Get out of there. And then um, all that I'll put in my freezer bag for chicken stock and stuff. Except that I don't like too much of the brown part because I think it makes it a little bitter. But the rest of it and that part, yeah. Okay. All right, I think we're done with the knife now. Let's get started. Okay, let's get the bag for those. Well, friends, it is a whopping 105 degrees outside, and I decided to do a canning project. But I've been wanting to can the sweet and sour chicken. We've got our, we installed a bigger evaporative cooler in the kitchen window, and the big one is up on the roof and going. Thank God, it was getting hot. And the two little ones weren't cutting it. So, I'm so glad my husband and Henry did that. They got it up on the roof, everything installed, and good to go. The puppy, she thinks that the kitchen is her domain. And she is laying on the kitchen floor. I might have to put her in her pen and out of my way. Okay, I've got the bell pepper already cut and rinsed, I just rinsed it through. Um, to be honest, I cut it a couple days ago and I wanted to make sure none of it was slimy or gross. So I rinsed it. I'm gonna set it here so we have a little room. Okay, we are ready to start the sauce. So what I'm gonna do, so you guys can see, is move the giant canner lift you guys up a little. There we are. Move the camera over. We'll start the sauce here and I'm going to go ahead and start my lids. Oh, come on. Nope. Doesn't want to light. It never wants to light. It's so temperamental. Oh, that stinks. I turn this fan on for just a moment. Get that gas smell out of here. <laughs> Don't want to have any accidents on my video, <laughs> friends. <laughs> All right. Now this back one should light. Oh, come on. Oh, it's touchy today. So I'm going to just turn this one to medium. And it's a lower... Um, now, according to Ball, and if there's a USDA uh, instructions, you don't have to boil your lids anymore, but I still like to. I don't know. I think that if the lids are wet, that this rubber seals better, and I don't know if it's in my crazy mind or what. So, we're going to go ahead and boil the lids. Now, they also say that you don't have to sanitize your jars anymore. Um, I just run them through the dishwasher, and that sucker gets so hot that I'm pretty sure it's sanitized. Okay, I'm going to set this chicken way back over here. It's not hot over there. Let's turn this down for a second and get our stuff going. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is three cups of vinegar. Now the original recipe had less so I had to adapt it to make it oops, hopefully work for six quarts. And if we have some leftover sauce, 
I could always just thicken it and cook some more chicken or something and make a sweet and sour. Okay, and it was how much of the teriyaki? Three quarters. And then two cups of water. So let's get that. Should have had all this measured out. Let's see. And honestly, usually I use a liquid measuring cup for liquid. But I think we're okay. It's usually pretty close to the same. Okay, so we're done with the vinegar. Let me grab a quarter cup. And we're also going to need some ginger. Let's see. Ginger. And also, I'm going to need to strain the pineapples. Let me see. I'm going to rinse the lids real quick. We want this pineapple juice from four cans. So you're going to want four cans of pineapple chunks. I've got two different kind. I raided the pantry and when I was in there I found one that was busted open. So it must have got old and uh, opened up. So I was like, oh, good thing I'm making this. Time to use up this pineapple. We're also going to need some vinegar to wipe our rims and a paper towel or rag or something. Okay, let's go ahead and do the juice. Ooh, I can't get it. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, seriously, they make these so hard to open. With my nails, if I have nails on, it's like not opening. And you know what? I didn't have nails on for a year when I put them on. And I'm already regretting it. I already lost the thumb. And they're already driving me crazy. Okay, so our juice from four cans of pineapple. Sorry, I forgot about the loud vent. I hope that wasn't too loud. I was just trying to get the gas smell out of here. And yes, I love cooking on gas. I don't care if it smells <laughs> or if I have to light the thing sometimes. My stove is like 10 years old and sometimes it gets a little temperamental. Right? Oh, come on, you guys, no barking right now. Right after I clean it, that's when it... Well, this seems like a lot of sauce. That's when it doesn't want to light because the igniter things get wet. So no biggie. But um, no, I hate cooking on electric. In fact, I think I've only cooked on electric stove maybe one time. I mean, even our travel trailer has propane. So I don't know if <laughs> I'd probably burn everything, who knows? I love cooking on gas stove. All right, let's see if I can get this lid off. Mmm. I just had to try one, you guys. Mmm. Okay, the teriyaki. We are going to do, and if you don't want to do teriyaki, or you could do soy. I like teriyaki, and I think it will give it a little sweeter flavor. So we're gonna need three of these because it's three quarters of a cup. Now remember the sauce is not gonna be thick. We're gonna thicken it. We will thicken it afterwards. Well, that's gonna make quite a brown sauce, huh? And I know when we can it, it's probably gonna be browner. It's probably gonna look gross, but it'll taste delicious. <laughs> okay, let's get some ketchup. And it calls for half a cup, sorry, moving you guys around, half a cup of ketchup. I know like in the restaurants that pink sweet and sour is actually coloring. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be brown. 
And that's okay. It might look ugly and everyone on the shelf will be like, ew, I don't want that. And then once they taste it, it'll be delicious. Okay, there's our ketchup. Whoops, making a mess here. Get all that goodness. Okay, what else do we need? Brown sugar, white vinegar, water, teriyaki ketchup, and it says two teaspoons of ginger. I'm hoping that's enough. Mm. I'm thinking I'll just add like one tablespoon. About that much. And then we gotta get our sugar. Like I said, I don't have two cups of brown sugar. Let me grab a paper towel. I don't have two cups. Is that what it calls for? Yeah. So I don't have two cups of brown sugar. We're gonna have to do half and half. Let me see. Do we have a better spoon here? All my spoons are uh, probably in the dishwasher. <laughs> we'll go with this one. A nice wooden spoon to stir it. So see how runny the sauce is? We're not gonna need, um, I mean, you're gonna have to thicken it after you open the can. Cause trying to thicken it before, things may go haywire. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. These guys work pretty good, but you know what works the best to keeping your brown sugar perfect? A slice of bread. Don't ask me why. I thought it was some crazy wives tale. Nope, it works. I tried it one day. I was like, no, that's not gonna keep your soften up. And I had some brown sugar that was real hard. And it, let me see, put that in. It softened it right up. Okay, but the little bear works pretty good too. Okay, so that's a cup. Oh, it's getting on the stove. Always making a mess, friends. Always making a mess. Mm, it smells good. I'm probably gonna wanna give it a little bit of a taste. Just to make sure it tastes okay. Let's see if we need to adjust anything. Okay, one more cup. This time I'm just gonna use some pure cane sugar because I do not have more brown sugar. So I need to put that on my list. We've been going through a, quite a bit of it in the last, I mean, I've been doing keto, but a couple recipes. So my nephew, get the rest of that. My nephew and his fiance moved back from Arizona. And he's really like my son because I raised him half as, well, once he was a preteen on up, he lived with us. And um, so he's really kind of like a son to me. Um, but he moved back from Phoenix. He had moved to Salt Lake, or no, to St. George. And then on to Phoenix to another job, some construction, or uh, concrete work. But, um, he got sick of Phoenix and came back. Even though it's just as hot here. Well, it might be a little hotter in Phoenix. I'm not sure. But it's so hot. Okay. And right now, there's a big cloud cover. Like it's going to thunderstorm. 
and then that makes it humid and evaporative coolers they don't work so good when it's humid they work a little bit differently they're more for a dry heat which is usually all it ever is here in the sub the last few years it's gotten more and more humid okay i'm gonna give it a test Woo! Mmm, that is good. It's tangy with all that vinegar. It'll, it'll definitely be like the perfect sweet and sour sauce. And I feel like all the sugars dissolved. Said to bring it to a boil though. It'll definitely be a yummy sweet and sour sauce. I'm gonna turn it up so we can get it to a boil. And while we're waiting for that to boil, Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna bring it to a boil because our chicken and everything's cold. The chicken I just got out of the fridge. So let's not. You're gonna want your jar lifters for later. For right now, we don't need them. So, and then we have a small space here to work with. I'm gonna start with chicken and only because it's already cooked. If it was raw, I think I would do the vegetables first and then the chicken. So we're thinking this is gonna be at least two meals. So we want quite a bit of chicken. But I wanna to try to also do it evenly here because I've got two containers full. I hope this is enough. It was a huge pack. The chicken breast. That looks like more than that one. Ew. Here, Daisy, do you want a little chicken breast? A little chicken juice? They're too spoiled. Okay, let's hope this does three more. It should. You can always move it around a little. <laughs> Puppy, you took over? Puppy just pushed her. Hey, hey. No, we're not doing that. No fighting over it. Ooh, we're going to be running it short here. Yeah, and that was a lot of chicken, too. I think it'll be fine because it's going to have veggies and everything else. Oh, let's take the debubbler out of there. We're going to need the debubbler, too. And your jar lifter thingy majiggy. I mean, not jar lifter. We already said that. Let's see, let's put more on that one, and that one. Okay, let me rinse my hands. Watch out, pups. All right, I think we're doing good. Let's get a handful of these. You can always go back. So I'm just going to start with just a good handful. And if you guys want to measure, go ahead. I never really, I mean, it's not rocket science. We're just canning. We're going to go back and add more. Now we can have two handfuls. Now I know we've got more. Be a little full there. Okay. I'm gonna want a lot of veggies, I'm assuming. You know, we want this to be a pretty good sized meal. Okay. Oh, I might have a little less. Let's get a couple from these fuller ones. Divvy them out. Okay. They look about right. Okay. There's that. Ugh. Let's do the well, let's do the onion. We'll put the pineapple on top, I guess. Good handful of onion. Remember that you can pack these down. You just shove them in there and pack them down. Oh, can you guys see? Sorry. Mm. I'm like, 
like I said, if I have any left, I will just use it for cooking. Let's do a tiny bit more in that one. Okay, we'll set that aside. And let's do some shoving down. Just shove it in there. We want to have some room for the pineapple. And I opened four jars, so we need to use four jars. A little more onion in that one. Okay. Let me go ahead and dump them in there. Then we have a big mess to clean up. Okay, let's get some of these guys back in. Oh, it's dripping. I'm gonna do the same. Handful of pineapple. And hope we can get them all to fit in there. I mean, what's sweet and sour without pineapple? Like I said, we'll be able to push them down. Let's get that one. Wow, this is so far, there's only two jars, two cans of pineapple, and I already opened them. So, maybe we shove more in. Or I might have to make some for dinner, which is a little more carbs than I eat now. But every once in a while, it's okay. I'm gonna really shove them in. We're also gonna debubble. So when we do that, we should have a little bit more room. filling them all the way up baby well we want an inch of head space really but mm. only well, taste good <laughs> okay I'm thinking that we better not put any more we got them pretty packed doesn't that look beautiful Mm-hmm. Right. We're gonna need the ladle. All right, watch out, pup. The pup is always under feet. Okay, it's real full. I'm gonna try not to spill it. Oh, shit. Okay, well, that's what I get. These jars are super full. First thing I do is spill it, <laughs> you guys. Uh. It's probably good. Let's get our debubbler. Boy, we're gonna have a mess to clean up. It smells great. Okay. So after debubbling here, we've got quite a bit. And I'm going to take that top one off. Mmm. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let's do this a little slower this time. Okay, I think that's pretty full. guys can't see because that's in your way. We're just going down the sides and you always want to use plastic to deep bubble. And now we do have about an inch of head space. Now this whole thing's going to have to be wiped down. It is going to be a sticky mess. 
Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to be wiping my stove down too. Okay, I'm going a little slower this time. Sometimes you just have to add the debubbler in there if your liquid isn't going down. We want to do this so we don't have air bubbles, air pockets. Let's add some more. Oh, I'm making a big mess of the stove, that's for sure. This is definitely going to have to be wiped up real good so we don't have any issues with our lids not sticking. Oh puppy, I gave her that bowl with the chicken juice in it and now it's at my feet. I think we will have enough juice. If not, you can always add a tiny bit of water. It would be better to have the juice though. And then just a tiny bit. Okay, so we want one inch of head space. And it's okay if this stuff is above it a little bit. I mean, it is going to shrink down, the veggies are, when it's pressure cooking. So it should be, at that point, not above the liquid, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. But I've never had an issue with having anything sticking up like that. Okay. Bubble. And these aren't really warm now, they're about lukewarm. So that's why I didn't want to boil it because I didn't want to bust the jars. Okay, that is plenty. Oh, we're gonna have some sauce left over. Maybe make uh, something with sweet and sour. I could thicken it with cornstarch. Boy, is this gonna be a sticky mess. Let's hope all the lids seal and that we get it good and clean. It's a little full. Okay, we are done with that. Let's set this sauce aside. We're going to be moving the canner in. Let's get the lids on and then rinse them off. Can't obviously rinse them without the lid on. Let's clean this up. Ooh, sticky, sticky mess. Okay. Puppy. Oh, it's sticky. Okay, let's get a couple paper towels to wipe the rims. I like to use the halves. That way you can unfold and Okay, this um, little vinegar pump, I got it on Amazon. It's like for nail polish remover. I use them at the shop for the doggy ear cleaner. We just put our cotton balls on there and choop, choop, and it's full. And so it gave me the idea, hey, I could put vinegar in it for 
my canning and just pump it and it's full. Okay, we're gonna really wipe these good and unfold it a couple times so that we get all that sugar and stuff off the lid. And I'm really wiping around the outside and the top. We really want to get them clean. So we have no issues whatsoever. Really good clean seal. And the vinegar helps cut grease. I know some people don't use vinegar and they don't, they don't just use a damp rag. I honestly like using the vinegar because it cuts the grease and I feel like it, um, you get a cleaner seal. If you see any right inside, just go ahead and wipe that too. Um, that way it's not coming up right here. Okay, let's unfold it. Got it real wet with vinegar. We want it to be clean. Otherwise, it could compromise your seal having sticky sugary stuff on top. So that's why I said really unfold and rewipe. Wipe it a few times. Okay, we've got them wiped. I'll go ahead and turn that off. Let's go ahead and get our lids on. Okay? Well, these are a little hot. Ooh. We just want them like that, not tight. Finger tight, they call it, but I just say don't do it tight. But like that. Here's our little one. I have one small mouth, the rest are wide. One small mouth bass and the rest are wide mouth bass. Come on. What is up with this magnet? I'm terrible. I've never had it do this before. It usually grabs them no problem. Okay. Come on. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I might as well use a knife. Okay. There they are. Now, you set that aside. Move these spoons, because I'm gonna have to wipe this down. And this just had water. I'll put it back in there. I'm gonna rinse these carefully, not tip them. Being careful not to tip them. Because water can be on the top, but you don't wanna tip and add any of your, um, this stuff up to the top. If that makes any sense. I don't want it to spill out. So it's okay if there's water on top, don't tip it. Ooh, that water's getting hot. Okay, so we could have, if we'd done a tiny bit more chicken, we had enough veggies pretty much that we could have done seven quarts. And that's what the sucker holds. So we could have. Okay, I'm gonna raise you up. Got our canner. Put these babies in. Now we have a, um, let me show you. It has a thing in the bottom, one of these dealies. If you don't have one of those, you can just put um, some kitchen towels in the bottom so that it's not touching the bottom. Let's put these babies in. I'm not going to put one in the middle. Uh, some people say don't put one in the middle when you're canning. And I always do because then it holds seven. I've never had an issue. But we only have six today anyway. So, all right. Let's get this cleaned up a little. And then I'll clean it. I'll spray it and clean it some more. 
We don't want to attract any ants. Lord knows. Those little suckers are everywhere. All right, I'm going to use my pitcher because this pot's so dang heavy. So I'm going to use the pitcher and fill it up. just makes it a little easier on my back. So like I said, I am imagining that these will turn a darker brown than what they are. So this is what it looks like now. Not really a red sweet and sour, but I'm sure it's going to turn darker. But that's okay. It'll still taste delicious. You want it about, about halfway up the jars at least. Enough so it can build up pressure. And we've got it about three quarters. That's probably good. I don't want to do any more. Okay. Now we uh, turn her on. I'm going to turn her on pretty high. Let's put it forward a tiny bit. My flame comes way out the front for some weird reason. Okay. I'm going to put our lid on. Now I've already washed and checked the seal and checked here to make sure you want to be able to see through this part. Make sure it's moving good. Make sure everything's good. Your seal's nice and clean. Some people even add a little um, mineral oil or vegetable oil to their seal. Okay, we're gonna put the seal on. Now, let me bring it over so I can show you. This little steam is the steaming. So we want it on that. We're gonna bring it to a boil. Don't ever try to open it. Once you have it sealed, just leave her alone. Okay, now it's not gonna build up pressure yet because we're steaming, we're venting. So what we're gonna do is let it sit here, come to a full boil, once it's steaming really good and venting out of this, then we, we time it for 10 minutes. Then we close it and for my altitude, it's like two and a half, so I just put it on three because we're at like 2,500 elevation. So I put it to three, which would be 3,000 and up. But I mean, I could put it on two also, but I just always put it on three. Okay, so we've got it. It's got to come to a boil. That's going to take it a while. And once it's steaming, I'll come back and show you all that process. This is the canner. T-Fall. Easy to use. <laughs> Says it's a five system security, but honestly, I don't, it doesn't have like locks. I wish I could afford a nice um, American one that has those locks on it, but just don't ever try to open it and you'll be good to go. Okay, we'll be back once it's come to a full boil and the steam's coming out. We'll set it for 10 minutes. Be back. Okay, I wanted to show you guys. See the steam coming up? So now we wanna set a timer for 10 minutes and that's what we call venting. And we let it go for 10 minutes. And then after that, we will turn the little knob to number three. Whoops, turn the little knob to number three. And then we let it go for 90 minutes. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. And as you can see, she's just humming along. And as you can see, there's no pressure built up yet. When there is pressure, we're gonna wanna keep it at the three because we have it on number three. Well, honestly, two and a half is okay because I'm at 2,500 elevation. So anyways, but we'll wanna keep an eye on that. But usually when I keep it a little bit higher than medium, it's perfect. And it'll stay that way the whole 90 minutes. All right, so we'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, I'm just holding it because our time is up. So we just want to turn this to three. I could get away with two, 
we're at 2500 elevation so I just turn it to three and now it's going to start building up pressure and we want to keep it you know at or a little under the three and we've got it on like mid high so that'll take a good 10 minutes or so and then we set the timer once it's going and up to pressure we'll set the timer for 90 minutes be back now why did it go back to one minute and 30 or is that an hour i don't know this thing's crazy i think it's right okay so we don't want it to go above the three so i'm going to turn it down just a tiny bit to medium because we want to keep it at the three or a little under and that's really all you have to do. There's nothing scary about pressure canning, as long as you do it right and you're safe. So we're on for an hour and 30 minutes, which is 90 minutes. And we'll be back when it's done. We'll let it come down to pressure, or come down, release all the pressure. So I'll be back once it's ready to open to show you the jars. All right, the pressure is down to zero and everything's released. When you open, you want to open it away from you. Ooh, and don't drip that hot water on your face, or I mean your feet. <laughs> face. And it is hot, hot. Carefully put that there. Let's see how she came out. Now they're hopefully you're all gonna ping and seal. Those two aren't yet. Looks great. We got a little bit of siphoning in there. Now you don't want to touch anything. Ooh. I just take mine out turn it this way I just take mine out oh my gosh doesn't want to slide okay come on cutting board and I put them there ow it's hot let's get that out of the way so set them back here and then I just cover them with a kitchen towel and I totally leave them alone until tomorrow morning and tomorrow I'll check them. Sorry. Tomorrow I'll check them, make sure that uh, all of them sealed. And if they did not seal, then we would have to reprocess or eat that can within, or put it in the fridge and eat it within a day or two. Okay, I'm just gonna cover them up and leave them. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you like this content and if you would like to see more canning videos and what you would like to see me can if you don't mind. Um, I have another one coming up that is um, Cajun red beans uh, and Dewey sausage. So it's a Cajun uh, sausage and beans that we're going to can and you can have it over like Cajun rice or white rice or whatever. Um, that's gonna be another video coming up with some red beans and andouille sausage, some Cajun seasoning, and I think it has bell pepper and onion. Anyways, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.